rotating to the left visualizes the right sided structures, rotating to the left visualizes the left sided structures of the heart. And then we have multiplanar multiplanar axis in this probe which rotates from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. A multiplanar axis in what you can see is 0 degrees, the probe starts rotating from 0 degrees to 180 degrees, almost there is a probe which keeps on rotating from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. It dissects the heart in various sections and uh, this is the, uh, uh, these are the two knobs which are there. This is the, this is the knob which is used to rotate it to the left and the right and the bigger knob is to rotate anti-flexion and retroflexion. Based on the depth of the probe, we have classified it as upper esophageal views, mid esophageal views, transgastric views and deep transgastric views. So upper esophagus usually has a great vessel. See this is the upper esophagus, usually at the great level and the most of the views are from the mid esophagus, mid esophagus and then the transgastric views and the deep transgastric views is visualizing the heart from the stomach. So this is the uh, Toronto General Hospital flowchart which is very uh, systematic review of the 20 comprehensive views. The probe is advanced. This is always the home button as I call it as. This is a home button that is a mid esophageal four chamber view. Whenever you get you get lost in the TE, you always come to the four chamber view and then start advancing or uh, withdrawing the probe or changing the angle. So this is a mid esophageal views. There are, uh, as we told, uh, we have the mid esophageal views which are roughly around 12, 12 mid esophageal views and then we have uh, two upper esophageal views. Then you have the transgastric views and a deep transgastric view, a single deep transgastric view. Let us understand firstly the mid esophageal, it's mid esophageal views. So what is green line and what is this lead line? This is how the ultrasonic beam actually dissects the heart. The green always is on the if we take this on the right side of the image and this is the left side of the image, the green is always on the right side of the image and the red is always on the left side of the image. This is the most important point. The green, the right side of the image and the red is on the left side of the image. Now mid esophageal four chamber view, how does it appear? So this is how it appears. When it dissects the heart over here and when I lift this up and show it, so this, these are the structures which will be visualized. On the left sided, we have the right atrium and the right ventricle. Then you have the left atrium and the left ventricle. The interposing valve on the left between the left atrium and left ventricle is a mitral valve and we have the tricuspid valve and we have the interatrial septum and the interventricular septum. This is a mid esophageal four chamber view. All the four chambers of the heart are visualized and we can also assess for the regional wall motion abnormality you can assess for the regional wall motion abnormality. We can measure the volumes in this patient and we can see uh, if there is any intracardiac shans, mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitations can be visualized by mid esophageal four chamber view. Now, how do we get this mid esophageal mitral commissural view? As we know, before we had cut the image like this. Now, we have moved the multiplanar angle to 60 degrees. If you can see the multiplanar angle here, it is moved to 60 degrees. You move the multiplanar angle, what does it mean is that the imaging plane which was like this, it has been moved up like this. That is the imaging plane is cutting now like this. So that means to say this structure which is over here, which is moved up. So when it moves up, you the mitral valve is dissecting the two commissures have the anterior and the posterior commissure, it's dissecting the two commissures of the mitral valve. Hence, it is called as a mid esophageal mitral commissural view, posterior medial commissure. So, always understand this is the, which is the posterior medial and which is the anterior lateral. Always, this is the anterior, this is the posterior, anterior, anterior lateral and this is the posterior medial commissure. So this dissects the posterior medial, uh, posterior medial and anterior lateral commissure. You have the left atrium and the left ventricle. As you can see, this is the right atrium, this is the right ventricle. The imaging plane is well below that. It dissects only the left atrium and the, and the left ventricle with the interposing mitral valve. And the scallops which can be seen are, this is P1, this is A2 
and this is P3. Atrial septal defects, when you want to visualize atrial septal defects, uh, Doppler interrogation across the interatrial septum, decreasing the Nyquist limit to bare minimums roughly around 20, will visualize the interatrial, the patent for aminovel or any ASDs, ostium second ASDs can be visualized. And once you see, when, when you want to visualize more of the SVC, what do we do? We advance or we withdraw? We always withdraw the probe because SVC is more cranial. So, withdraw the probe. Here also you can visualize the, if at all you have a sinus venosus ASD which is draining into the SVC, then this is the best view to visualize the sinus venosus ASDs as well. From then onwards, from 90 degrees, it was right here. From 90 degrees, the multiplanar angle is moved to 120 degrees. These are all the roughly the numbers. Sometimes you might get it at 120, sometimes you might get it at 140. So, these are the rough numbers or rough degrees where it has been rotated to get certain views. So, roughly it is rotated to 120 degree to get the long axis of the left, long axis of the left atrium. That is mid esophageal long axis view, left ventricle, long axis of the left ventricle. So, here again you have different walls. This is the anteroseptal wall. This is the RVOT, hence this becomes the anteroseptal wall and this becomes the inferolateral wall and this is the mitral valve and this is the uh, aortic valve cusp. So, the one which is closer to the RVOT, which cusp it can be? It can be the right coronary cusp. It is a right coronary cusp and this can be either non-coronary or the left coronary cusp and the one which is here is A2 scallop of mitral valve. One which is on to the left side is a P2 mitral scalp. And here, what are we visualizing? Here, we can visualize the mitral inflow velocities. When we put a pulse wave Doppler across this, we can see the mitral inflow velocities. You can also see for um, aortic regurgitation, mitral regurgitation, which scallop has been involved. If A2, P2 scallop has been involved, then we can visualize. And this is the best view to see the length of the A2 and the P2 because that uh, A2 dictates the uh, during a mitral valve repair when you see the length of the A2 that is very important to decide on the ring size during mitral valve repairs. From mid esophageal long axis view which is at 120, let the probe remain at 120. Now slightly withdraw the probe. Once the probe is withdrawn, the iota becomes more horizontal the iota becomes more horizontal and you can take the measurements of the iota very clearly because the when the iota becomes more horizontal the measurements very uh, are very clearly seen the, i mean the very clearly taken so he, this is the annulus from here to here is the annulus let us stop this image this is the annulus and this 1 cm below the mitral valve cusp insertion is the lvot and then we have the sinus, these are the two sinus, these are the sinus of Valsalva and this is the sinotubular junction and this is the ascending aorta. Try to be as vertical as possible, try to be as vertical as possible when you are taking the measurements. From there, now the multiplanar angle was at 120 degrees. So, at from 120 you start decreasing the angle. Once you start decreasing, it was roughly around like this because this is the aortic valve roughly around here is the aortic valve and the probe was cutting like this. Now, you start decreasing the angle. Once you start decreasing the angle to roughly around 60 to 80, you start decreasing the angle to around 90 degrees. So, once you start decreasing the angle, you have the RV inflow outflow view. RV inflow in the sense the tricuspid valve can be visualized very nicely. Outflow in the sense the RVOT can be visualized.